the technique of Mohs surgery was invented by a general surgeon named Frederick Mohs in the 1930s. It is a commonly utilized practice today by many surgeons and, and physicians who specialize in the removal of skin cancers. After your original biopsy, which may or may not come back showing a malignancy, your dermatologist or physician may recommend Mohs surgery. If indeed this technique is appropriate for your specific condition, um, Mohs surgery will be scheduled. The goal of Mohs surgery then is number one, to remove the tumor in its entirety. The second goal is to preserve as much normal tissue as possible. And here, therein lies the real uh, benefit of Mohs. We are fully removing the tumor without wasting any of your tissue unnecessarily. On the day of your Mohs procedure, you will come in at your designated uh, time. Um, you'll be taken to your room where questions will be answered and paperwork will be signed, including a consent for the procedure itself. At that time, you'll be made comfortable in a, a sitting or lying position, however feels best for you, and the area will be identified. Typically, we'll have a photograph or a, a map of your body to guide us to where the biopsy was taken from and guide the surgical procedure itself. The area will be cleaned with alcohol, uh, sometimes marked with a marking pen, and then injected with a local anesthetic. The local anesthetic does involve the use of very fine needles, hurts very briefly and fairly minimally. After that, your, the area should be entirely numb for about two hours. The first step of the process involves removing the visible tumor with a very small margin of tissue around the edge. The wound is then cauterized as necessary to stop any minimal bleeding and a sterile dressing is placed over the top. You may be then asked to go to the waiting room uh, while the tissue is processed and other patients are treated. From there, the tissue is taken uh, to our on-site laboratory where the, it is processed in a very uh, specialized technique and stained and inspected by the pathologist. The unique thing about Mohs is the way the tissue is handled from the time it leaves your body until the time it's sitting under the microscope. The special way the tissue is cut and removed from your body is important. As equally important is the way the technician processes the tissue and lays it on the slide all the way to the point where the pathologic reading is performed under the microscope. All these techniques and methods are specific to Mohs and all lend themselves to a very precise, accurate reading of your tissue pathology. Once we have pathologic confirmation under the microscope that your tumor is all removed, you will be brought back to the room for one final time where a decision on closure is made. Some lesions are closed with a simple repair in a straight line fashion, some will involve a flap, and some may involve a skin graft. Other lesions are left to heal on their own depending on the area of the body and our goals at achieving a maximal aesthetic outcome from your procedure. Most of these procedures can be accomplished in the room themselves. Occasionally, the area will be too large and may require a trip to an operating room at a later date. Once your uh, closure is addressed, you will be once again bandaged and sent home with written instructions on how to care for the wound. In most cases, you are able to shower and get the wound wet two days later and then dress it with a light dressing and some ointment. Your suture removal will be anywhere between 7 and 14 days depending on the wound itself, the location, and the size of the excision. At that point, you will return to the office for suture removal and be given further instructions depending on the healing process that you have undergone so far. During the normal process of healing, every wound is going to be a little bit red, a little bit warm, and cause a little bit of discomfort. When these symptoms seem to be increasing as the days go by and not decreasing, there might be reason for concern. Specific symptoms that would warrant a phone call to the office or that might uh, require further investigation would be a wound that is draining a colored, uh, draining a cloudy material, a wound that is becoming more red instead of uh, decreasing in redness as the days go by, a wound that is swelling past the third day when really the swelling should be subsiding, and uh, fever or other systemic or other symptoms that are running through your whole body. If any of these should occur, we encourage you to call the office uh, or come back in for an appointment if possible. Because this will involve an incision into your skin, you will be left with a scar to some degree or another. In general, Mohs technique will leave you with a smaller scar than other methods of skin cancer excision due to the fact that it is done in a precise, slow, gradual fashion, preserving as much tissue as possible. The scar will be permanent, but should fade nicely and be fairly imperceptible after a period of time. During the recovery period, when you are healing from your Mohs procedure, you will be asked to refrain from vigorous physical activities uh, to some extent. Aggressive sports activities, running, jogging, and things of that nature should be avoided to help limit the swelling, bruising, and other potential complications. 
Your normal everyday activities will be able to continue without much interruption. The pain should be minimal and your functioning should be close to normal. If you should have any doubt as to uh, severe infection being present or if any significant bleeding should occur, you are always encouraged to go to your local emergency room for prompt treatment.